All right, so it never fails. I will definitely say some things that will be completely just so, I don't say extreme, so through my eyes. I'm not even copying anybody else. There is no one I look up to, really. I respect people and their abilities and admire things that they can do that I can't. But I look up to no one. I look down on no one. And so when I talk about the things I talk about, it's literally through through my eyes. What I've seen, what I've experienced, what I know to be true. There's plenty of evidence out there if you only look. And you can't be under the influence. Because if you are, you will not see danger for what it is until it hits you squarely in the solar plexus. So everything that I talk about is from an aggressively unique aspect perspective and definitely through the eyes of the world that I have seen. And it's not a really nice world. It's a very fucked up world. And I'm kind of glad that my mother showed me that side of the world. Because... I had to see it in order for me to find a way to protect myself. For you to even know how to protect yourself, you have to kind of be in the danger and survive it. If you can't survive danger, it's not going to matter anyways. You wouldn't survive it when it came to you when you didn't know it was around. So when you are in a situation where it could be relatively controlled, maybe not all the time. Plenty of times I could have died. No one would have known. But uh, that will then give you an opportunity to figure out how to strategize your survival and not put yourself in danger. Oh yeah, I've done some crazy ass things. Coming over here to Ohio with nothing except for $2,500 and all my shit in the back of my car, <laughs> going into the unknown, absolutely. Leaving everything, absolutely. I've tried to leave everything several times when I left California, three or four times. And then when I couldn't figure out how to do things outside of it. Then I came back with tail between my legs trying to like, okay, what's time to start over again. Keep doing it until you find a way to leave California. Why do you got to leave California, Jillian? Because, well, you're seeing what's going on now at Bay Area. Tesla is laying off. San Francisco is, is down to nothing. LA is going down to shit. People are moving out of Beverly Hills. Oh yeah. I already knew I was, it, that was, Innately, I knew that California was not the place to be over the long period, of, over a long time. And so the ability to pick up and leave, the ability to start over again, the ability to look at everything and redevelop yourself, the ability to evolve and change. Oh, my God, that is that is a power that many people do not have. And if you have that power to change and pick up and leave everything and you have the power to observe your own bullshit and other people's bullshit and say it and be unapologetic. That's a fucking power that I think women should have. Some men have it and they do say what they say, but women, women need to have that fucking power because women have been targets. Women have been disposable. Women have been brutalized. Women have been just <sighs> abused by the system by their friends, by their family. And so it takes, it will take a woman to be the one to point the fucking shit out. It will take a woman to save her fucking self. It'll take a woman to potentially maybe even give her kids a chance. It won't be the man. And I figure that out. It won't be the man because he has no, unless he's like a skinny dude that has no power in a really aggressive society you know, me most men have no one to be afraid of. They are the things to be afraid of. That's why men feel that they do no wrong. Whether they're the breadwinner or someone that throws their weight around. And so they become monsters. Not all of them. But some men know how much power they have because no one has challenged them, really. And if they do, then let me tell you, all hell will break loose. And so it'll take a woman to save her fucking self. It'll take a woman to give some hope to other women. It won't be the man. Men will not give women the hope. 
men will, and and that's just kind of the way shit goes. It's not because I'm a man hater. No, I think men are fucking awesome. I like my man. I love my man. I respect him. He has his own bullshit, but every man does. But, uh, but I like the fact that how we have worked our way into our situation. But again, I know men's limitations. And when you've been given the gift of power and privilege and ability and strength and consistency, you're not going to give that shit up until the system forces you to give it up or at least modify it. So I understand why men are not as evolutionary because they don't, they never had to be. I'm telling you, I was so envious of men many years ago because I wanted to be like them. Consistent, no PMDD, not having to worry about, you know, all the things that women worry about and be a wolf on Wall Street, be the ultimate salesman, make a shit ton of money and throw your weight around and be like the thing that, you know, and that's, and so when men are given, when men were given that power and privilege, there's no reason for them to change. And then they can be, some of them can turn predatory and throw their sexual weight around. And then force their girls and daughters to have babies and force their wives to have babies because that's traditional. And other women do that too to other women, put them in a place of slavery and, and, and disposability. And yeah, these poor girls out there. Now you look at them. They're all over OnlyFans, Instagram, trying to go to college, being educated sexual slave to somebody. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And so when I, saw that post this morning about another girl coming up missing in Pennsylvania, Appalachia, Pennsylvania. And, and that was uh, actually after I was watching a video on YouTube about some abom- abominable, I don't say snowman, but like, what do we call it? Bigfoot or some monster in the Pennsylvania woods that two hikers were like running away from. <laughs> Someone was telling a story on YouTube and I was listening to the storytellers on YouTube. And then listen, and then then see that post about that girl coming up missing in an abandoned building. I'm just like, Jesus, you know? Yeah, women. Right now, I figured out that uh, with seeing that, plus then our Luciferian tribal mentality, group mentality, society of all the 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 conspiracy world and exposing what people in high up government and religion and politics do and science. And then also they are a reflection of the population. So when you have all these things like pedo wood and what these P E D O F F P H I L E S is they're exposing, you know, in the Democrat party or even the Republican party, because they're both, they're both, Both sides have predators in them and you have powerful predators and you have ones that are breeding are bred into the population, even children right now. And so, yeah, the Luciferian truth movement shone a light on the deadly family mentality, developing serial killers or tribal, the deadly tribal family mentality, developing serial killers and sexual predators in the population. I kind of put it all together when I put all, when I went down, down my timeline and looked at where I left off. And yeah, I bring in a little bit of science, salting in, salting out, and then my own little issues with toilet shit. That's why I'm like, I gotta be, I gotta know how to do this stuff. Because, I mean, hey, I, I brought in a professional yesterday because my husband's on the road and he was trying, he tried to fix it and it didn't stick and that's fine. Not a big deal. It's not his fault. You know, it just, he thought that that would work, whatever it was. And so it didn't work and that's okay. So we brought in professional and I'm thinking like, dude, you know, if the guy was safe. He was pretty much safe. And he looked and he was, and you know, my gut said it was okay to let him in. And, but yeah, I was by myself. I could have been destroyed, killed, whatever. But you know, I, my gut said that it was a safe situation. My husband called during the time. So, okay. But that's not always going to happen. That's not always going to happen. And so, yeah, I'll tell you, man, that was um, an example of what women who are by themselves, who don't know how to do stuff, that's what they're faced with, having to invite strangers into their house to fix stuff for them, to do shit for them. 
having to ask their Facebook community to come over and help them, their neighbors, other family members. And so it's fun being a princess for a second, but not really. When you have to rely on someone else to help you do stuff, okay, and even bring in a stranger, dude, that leaves women open to be kidnapped, brutalized, whatever. And sometimes by people they know. And not even that well. And even pretty well. And so, yeah, yesterday was like, holy shit, yeah, I mean, hmm, in a different circumstance, things could have gone very differently. And, and, and husbands can't always be there. Boyfriends can't always be there to protect their girls or to protect their wives or their girlfriends. And so women, like women, if, if a husband dies or a boyfriend dies or family members die and you're the only one left, can you, hand, can you be on your own? Do you, do you have the street sense, the street smarts to understand how to survive on your own without bringing in another stranger to take care of you and then get involved with that kind of bullshit? That's the thing with the J world when you finally tap into biological immortality. I say it like that because it's all relative to whatever that means. But in my world, when you start outliving people around you, and there's still millions and billions of people out there with their own issues that you have to still deal with and live among, will you be able to survive on your own for the most part and have your gut working for you to make sure you don't bring in danger, invite danger into your world because you're so desperate to have something done and taken care of because it's like a matter of, well, you have a toilet or you don't have a toilet. <laughs> you have something working relatively well or something doesn't work relatively well. I mean, that's what you're faced with. Because even licensed professionals are not always savory. Sometimes it can be unsavory. Luckily, the person that came through here was relatively savory. Nice person. But that not that will not always be the case. And so, yeah, that was a little bit of a wake up call for me. And that's why I'm like, holy shit, I better learn how to diagnose this toilet type of situation. And then even if I can't do it, man, then you then you then you make sure that uh you diagnose it correctly so at least know what you're dealing with. So that way you don't get ripped off, and that way you also can figure out what you're dealing with with whoever. I I mean there's no way 100% to protect yourself from strangers, especially when you have to bring in strangers as professionals to take care of things that you can't take care of. And so, but yeah, so anyway, so I um, was going through that and then just doing other stuff, figuring out cleaning stuff and hard water and soft water and all that and understand where my husband, my husband's background and my background, completely different worlds. Like, completely different worlds. And so, and there's reasons why we have the worlds that we have. Uh, or why we have, I don't say how, why we have perspectives that we have because of the backgrounds that we came from. And trying to merge those two worlds together. And it's not easy. It's fucking difficult. But it does take, then, finally, understanding. So, anyway, so I'm just going to go down from the top to the bottom on this because i got to just hit all the points. And it might take me a few, it might take me a couple minutes. <laughs> But anyways, the Luciferian truth movement shone a light on the deadly tribal family mentality developing in serial killers and sexual predators in the population. Not only do they identify those in the mainstream, but also within themselves and their own movement. Okay, and that was part of all that. The chemtrails movement, the anti-GMO movement, the anti-V movement, shit, the anti-Florida and the water movement, the anti-Democrat movement, the anti-New World Order movement, the anti-Green Sustainability movement. I mean, you name it, the whole Ascension movement going off into Pleiades and saying that Nibiru is coming here pretty soon. I've been, though you name it, it's on the internet, I fucking was part of it. I was in it, I was playing the part, I was radicalized, I was hating things, I was just, oh my gosh. So I, I've been there, I know, I know how predatory I was. And then the Jilly Juice movement, right? <laughs> so the truth movement became who they despise the most, and now they are predators on the hunt. That includes the health and wellness world hunting for cancer or trying to disable disease. Before you accuse others, you better look in your own backyard because what are you breeding into the population? All right? And if you can't see this, it's too close to you because you're in it. You are it. 
So those that are against Israel, those are against Palestine, those are against whatever. I understand you have an issue with what goes on over there in other countries and wars, and I know that. But what are you breeding? Oh, hold on a second. And I was trying to reach him, but he's probably busy doing stuff. But yeah, I mean, because what are you breeding into the pot? Uh, barricula, what is it? You are it. So, so yeah, you know, the whole, fuck, I just got lost. But that's okay. No big deal. So the truth movement became who they were despised the most, and now they are the predators on the hunt. That includes the health and wellness industry, world hunting for cancer, trying to disable disease. Before you accuse others, you better look in your own backyard. Because what are you breeding into the population? And if you can't see this, it's too close to you because you're in it. You are it. So again, I was in it, and I and I played it. And now I'm watching those. Like, Okay, let me go back. I'm going through my mind of what I went through. And then, so yeah, the whole thing with Gaza. Okay? Yeah, it sucks watching people do things to other people and whatever. You can't stop it. It's there. But now, with you watching that, and it's radicalizing you into hating someone, a person, place, or thing, what do you think you're now teaching your children? I know to hate war, but to, but to, but at what expense? Because you can't stop what goes on, you know, 6,000 miles away. But you can control how things happen in your house. And even though you're against war and you don't like people, innocent people getting killed, whatever that means. No one's coming into your house trying to destroy you. No one's declaring war on you. And so until it happens to you, best not to get radicalized against a person, place, or thing, because most likely that's a psychological operation. Wait till it happens to you, and then I can see you have an issue with a person, place, or thing. But that's that's the thing, is that what goes on in third world countries is like radicalizing those who are watching it. And turning them into whatever they choose to turn into. Who is they? Well, people will choose how they react to, to aggressive scenes. They will either be turning into the very thing they hate the most, or they realize, okay, shit has happened over there. I can't get involved. It's not my war. And I know people use the argument, like, what happened six million, you know, the six million Jews in, in 1940-something? If, people, if, we, if we would have gotten involved and stopped it, then that wouldn't have happened. And so those that, that ignored it, then, you know, that's what happened. But... Even if, but, but even, even then, okay, when you're in that rise of blaming someone, how many kids have died in the hands of their parents because of all the remedies? Because they're blaming someone, they're against someone, like Big Pharma. And so they found a platform called the Holistic World to turn to and it's like Hitler rising to power when you're against big pharma and you're now using the holistic world as an in lieu of a, a, a pharmaceutical you don't see anything wrong with that and so then you have the holistic world like Nazi Germany rising to power and these kids are being fed all these antibiotics and supplements and detoxes and all these things that are working against them causing a potential died suddenly. So how, So they don't know that, that, they're, that they're doing is wrong. They don't know until someone tells them later on, until they see the fallout of what they've done later on. But during that time, they don't see anything wrong with what they're doing. So yeah, back in, in World War II, the German people did not know what they were doing was wrong. They were feeding into someone like a Hitler who told them all these things. And so that so when you think about it, Nazi Germany was like the holistic world, working against something they thought was the enemy. That's how the system turns shit around on you back from World War II. And so now you have to realize there's a lot of psychological operations and you have to take care of your family at home, under your roof, things that you can control, like bringing in all the food, deal with the pain and suffering, release the demons. Stop trying to stop things that you can't stop. You can't stop the war in Gaza. You can't stop the chemtrails, contrails, whatever you want to call it. You can't stop what other people do in their own homes around their family members, around the bees industry and organic or not, whatever. You don't have any power over somebody else and their household. And you don't even have power over your freaking kids. Okay? So the Luciferian truth movement shone a light on the deadly tribal family mentality developing serial killers and sexual predators in the population. 
Not only do they identify those in the mainstream, but also within themselves and their own movement. The truth movement became who they despise the most, and now they are the predators on the hunt. That includes the health and wellness world hunting for cancer, trying to disable disease. Before you accuse others, you better look in your own backyard, because what are you breeding into the population? And if you can't see this, it's too close to you because you're in it. You are it. My world, if you can handle it, can temper aggressive sexual urges so you don't become predatory and destructive. Release those fucked up demons. But the government cannot force anyone to go through pain and suffering and have a type of sexual exorcism. So that's why we're in climate change. Intolerant people will be phased out, but we still have to deal with what we have developed in the population. And the future is coming fast and it's here. Okay? My world is the future because there's nothing else except for death and suffering, endless suffering. But it requires pain and suffering. But I'm telling you, sex has been weaponized against the population. And it turns people predatory. We just got to notice that we have a predator in the neighborhood. Okay? I mean, there's probably countless ones that don't even get, you know, convicted. Because they never were caught. And they could be your neighbors. You don't fucking know anything about anybody. So assume everyone's a fucking sexual predator and act accordingly. You don't accuse them, but you don't put yourself in a position to be preyed upon. But women don't know any fucking better. I didn't either. I mean, I found my husband on the internet. I don't know his background. I never did a Google search. I never did any kind of like background check on him. So I kind of went in. I was naive, but I wasn't. I was prepared for anything. Because I had nothing else to lose. Everything was lost in California. I had nothing else to lose. I already lost people in California. That was already done there. And that, I didn't do anything to them, but they weren't going to... I was. I didn't fit in. So I had nothing to lose. So I figured, hey, if I had nothing to lose, except for my life, I might as well figure out how to battle it out. And I did. Alright? So... But even then... You know, you still have to save yourself even in a relationship. And so over-sexualized people become extremely predatory. That includes all sexual orientations, and I don't discriminate. And that includes the family, the Manson family, the tribal mentality. Tribal mentality can refer to a psychological phenomenon where people identify strongly with a group such as social, political, or ethnic faction. It could also refer to leadership philosophy that draws inspiration from tribal communities where members share a common purpose, identity, and values. Yeah, and until you become different. And if you're different, either you're, and that's what happens to the, the homosexual and the, and the LGBT community. They were in a tribal mentality of a hetero, traditional family. And then they found out in the 1950s and 40s that there was a segment of the population that was homosexual. And they were ousted or destroyed or bullied or tried, the system tried to convert them, you know, through electric shock therapy or through religious purposes. And so tribal mentality is deadly if you don't fit within certain very rigid parameters. So you can ask the black population, you can ask the homosexual population, you can even ask the Julie Jews population what it's like not to fit in with a certain tribal mentality. It's fucking deadly. Family can be fucking deadly. That's why you have the natural killer T-cells that go and search and destroy. This happens in the population with children and adults who have been radicalized to destroy anything different. And parents teach children intolerance to their children. And so that's why we have serial killers and dictators in the past, even today. So you can look at the type of people that have rose to power in the, in the, in the activist world. And you see such vitriol, such anger, such acid, acid words come out of their mouth. I can already see what some of these kids will turn into in the future. I just look at the parents and I wince. All we could do is watch it out, watch it play out on Facebook and the system will have all the evidence that it needs of why they're doing what they're doing. And so we're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. You're in the battle of your life. That's why I would encourage your daughters and sons to have children. First of all, Will they even survive climate change? And then what are you breeding into the population? Because even with the whole J world, you still have to feed them a lot of food if they can't handle it and they have pain and suffering and other diseases that come up, genetic defects that were passed down from generation to generation. You can't force a kid or anyone to go through pain and suffering. You can't force so much food in anyone to get ahead of whatever situation. 
it has to be done in a progressive. And if the environment is that much more accelerated than the person can retain and release, it's a, it's a losing venture. It's out of your fucking hands. You have to give that person to the medical system to do what they have to do. And then it's, it's basically the trans station is done. You're, you have to save yourself because you can't save anything that's dependent upon you. Oh, I learned the hard way. Believe me. I learned the hard way. And so when I found that article about that lady in Pennsylvania, then I started going through, then I was, I'm going back to my head when I was thinking about like what makes serial killers serial serial killers, and and I'll tell you, you know, it, it, it obviously it happens in the family and through generational reproduction and other things that happen in the family, and even through the pharmaceuticals industry, even through the herbal industry, and all the different you know rituals and things, and of course. Some kids are victimized by church members, by their family, by their friends, by people groomed to be in that family, and they're abused for years, and then they something happens. Screw loose happened, and then they, they don't really talk about it, or they don't really resolve it. They don't release a demon, and they have children on top of that, and then you don't know what kind of shit you're getting when people have been abused, whether sexually abused, physically abused. Or so many other things. And so now you're like, fuck. Now it's a crapshoot what you're getting. So sometimes predators are your family and friends and people you know grooming the family. And so this article about Ariel Castro kidnapping those girls for at least 10 years, give or take. Something like that. Held them hostage. Did what he wanted to do. Held them and, and he locked them upstairs and tied them up and all this other shit. And we have girls walk around like there's no serial killers in the world. We have girls go walking from bars by themselves. We have girls going off and doing things and being caught by themselves. We have girls going off on the internet, like what I did, and go meet some dude. Okay, but again, I had a little bit of street sense. I've been through some shit, and I had nothing else to fucking lose. Not everybody has my background. So even though what I did with my husband, meeting some strange dude on the internet... It came out, turned out to be an okay situation, but I fought for it. I had, I had my own shit to go through during that whole time. It wasn't easy. But, uh, my gut told me this person was relatively, had potential and wasn't, you know, but again, you, <laughs> you never know. I wouldn't recommend what I did <laughs> 13 years ago to anyone today, but that was 13 years ago. Not that it was that different, but it was a little bit different, but not that different. But it was because it's before climate change. Now we're in an accelerated environment. Would I do what I did back then today? Fuck no. You don't know who you're getting. And I've seen, I mean, I've, I've actually, I've seen bad people and I know I got myself situations and I'm like, okay, and I survived them and that's fine. But the last seven years, I have been in contact and been so close to so many bad people to the point where I had to go to the FBI and, 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 and going back and forth with them, even through email and through Facebook. That right there, yeah, is every indicator of what the fuck you're dealing with in our society. Intolerant, radicalized people that would do harm to you if given the chance. And they've been radicalized in politics, in religion, and in science. And if you even look a certain way and you're in their presence and you act a certain way and they think they have the right to destroy you or hurt you or maim you, that's what you're seeing on the news. We have women that are targets, men that are targets, certain groups that are study targets. And we have parents teaching that shit to their kids. What do you think they're teaching their kids to do? And what, they, what will these kids turn into? Some of these kids will be serial killers, are serial killers. And their parents don't even know it because the parents aren't around 100% of the time. How can this kid that you see on the news get away with killing somebody Three years ago, he's 10 years old. He killed someone at seven years old, a stranger, and no one knew, not even the parents. That's how fucking scary it is out there. So, so I came very close to a lot of bullies of mothers who teach their sons to be bullies to other, to women and to other people who they think is the enemy because the articles and things radicalized people and blew things way out of proportion and never really questioned what the other story is. That's what I experienced the last seven years. 
was how articles and people characterize things to then radicalize people into destructive serial killer, torturous domestic violence, and bully fucking behavior. You know how easy it is to get someone to turn and switch like that? Just a fucking article. And you see people just believe whatever it is they read. That's how easy. So I can only imagine if an article can turn people to be radicalized into potential destructive tendencies. Well, you can only imagine what these parents are doing with their kids. You can only have fucking imagine what these parents are turning their fucking kids into. And now you watch on the internet. You look, look, look at the, the activist community. And some of these people have children. And they're not afraid to express they have children. What are you teaching your kids? See, that, and so the system knows this. The system knows this. They know that what they're showing you on Facebook, the reels and all the wars, are causing people to be so radicalized that you actually exhibit tendencies that you could actually develop that so maybe the parent doesn't go and kill someone, but maybe the kid might. Maybe that kid will turn into something that the parent, that they think will please the parent. And that's the scariest of all is these kids are growing up so fast and maturing so fast and they're listening to their dad or their mom rave or rant about something. And so something clicks in that kid's head and then they're like, oh, I'm going to go and save the world. I'm going to go do this, 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 and this. And mommy and daddy will be so proud of me. <sighs> That's some fucking scary shit. And so anyways, so Ariel Castro, Ariel Castro was, is one of those, he, he was, he was sexualized probably at an early age and became very predatory. So that guy was a sexual predator. He was killed in jail and he held these girls captive for years. When men or women are driven by sexual urges, especially now, the most naive are targets. Those are your girls and your boys who have absolutely no street sense. And mommy and daddy are obviously oblivious and poten and potentially even radicalized. Group mentality, bringing in strangers. You think the government is so horrible? You better check out your own backyard. And what are you producing in the population? Because, but most parents are unaware of how deadly their own children are because their children know how to hide their alter ego and not show you the other side. So now parents have to get fucking smart and not think their kids are angels. Some kids are little terrors and mommy is too unaware to notice it. Or she's aware, but she doesn't give a shit. That's why I'm not really too impressed that you can have children. Anybody can have a child if they have all the equipment. And even you can get in vitro if you have the money. So I'm not impressed that you can have a child. What, I'm mo what I'd be most impressed is if you know how to raise yourself and redirect the death trajectory and not use cures and you face your own demons. Because if mommy can face her own demons and redirect herself, maybe the kid has a fucking chance. Maybe. Not all the time. But if mothers and fathers don't redirect their own death trajectory and they're on the cures and the, the diet and, the, and all the radicalism, I can only imagine what's going to go on with that kid. That kid's going to be radicalized into something deadly at some point. Or they'll destroy themselves at their own hand. Because the system will activate their um, death programming. Because that was built into people. The self-destruct, a peptisis. It's called parenthood. And so that's why I urge people, don't have kids now. Just say not now because you don't know what you're bringing in. You don't know what kind of deficits and, and, and deficiencies you pass on to that child. And then also what kind of issues and emotions that you're passing on to that child that you haven't even resolved yourself. And that's a scary thing. But I'm telling you, sex has been weaponized against the population. And now we have sexual predators motivated by aggressive sexuality and children are in the crosshairs. And sometimes even children are serial killers. And they grow up to be adults you have to be fucking aware of. I'm telling you, the porn industry was weaponized. You know, the um, 1960s, all that, the modeling and all the, 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 um, the, the sexual revolution, the feminism, and even the whole, you know, the whole Christian revival is all about the family. So you have the feminists who are all about women having sex everywhere. Then you have the Christian revival, which was the counterpart that was still the same thing, but done differently. And so then you had all the girls being told they had to have children and be married to somebody and just take somebody's abuse and make sure all their orifices are up for grabs for their husband or their boyfriend. So these girls are being abused and they don't know it because they're saying yes to it, right? Because they think it's supposed to be. But even women 
and mothers haven't even told their daughters and sons what to what 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 not what to expect and how to 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 save themselves even in that relationship because inevitably one person will think that that your orifices are up for grabs for them that all of your orifices are made to be for the other person and and I'm telling you even in LGBTQ relationships even some of the men have been abused by their partners but they don't know it because they said yes and so then that's why you have the anal cancer that's why you have the cervical cancer ovarian cancer because it's being battered and bruised by somebody with a battering ram and that's what they said that those that have big or big what do you call it members <laughs> fallacies right are barbarians or just old and so that's why I feel sorry for those that are in the porn industry and in this in the prostitute industry and even in in, in only grand or was only fans Instagram because it's yucky out there. Old men that want these young girls, fucking yucky. Yucky, yucky, yucky. I feel sorry for women. I really fucking do. God. Man, I'm just, I'm just, I'm seriously I <laughs> It's bad out there. And so there's already so many of these bred into the population. What's these? Who am I talking about? Oh, yeah. Kids. A stunning confession. I'm not crying, but I'm just like, wow. I just feel bad for women out there. I really do. Stunning confession. Deputies say 10-year-old boy admitted to killing this man at, as a 7-year-old. There's already so many of these bred into the population. Now, remember, I'm not a man hater, just so you know. Men don't need to be so huge to hurt the woman. Okay? Men can be small enough so that way it's still fun that you guys have fun, but not to the point where you're actually intending to tear somebody apart. And some men want to tear up women apart because that's where they get the most satisfaction is the destruction of somebody else. Okay? And that's what women have to be aware of all right so that's already so many so there's already so many of these bred into the population that's why it's so scary just like the vietnam war you don't know who the enemy was because they could have been mothers with children carrying explosive because she was forced to do that so you can only imagine what kind of children are out there hunting people when given the opportunity the pharmaceuticals industry and some other things bred serial killers in the population there are fucked up parents out there who antagonize their children purposely to turn them into deadly people. Corporal punishment along with malnutrition and a screw loose in their head. Yeah, you can trigger a serial killer in a boy or a girl and sometimes you wouldn't even know what you're developing because everything happens in utero due to so many different conditions. So on the outside and even on the inside, everything seems peaceful like Chris Watts, right? That case where he was a relatively normal kid. He, he, he didn't have any too much of an opinion. He didn't make any waves as a child. But as soon, so he got it, so he, so he married a girl who has an issue with lupus and other things. She has three kids. He's done, he's done being a slave to that family. Nicole Cassander comes in and just woos him with sexuality, a freedom from all that responsibility of children and everything else. And so what does he do? He snaps. He fucking snaps and he annihilates his whole family so he can go and have that sexual freedom and fun and whatever else. He 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 bought into the party line and he immediately resented and he, he endured so much. Yeah. And so sometimes you don't even know what you're developing because everything happened in utero due to so many different conditions. And then that kid snaps as an adult. You don't know what kind of shit goes on out there. That's why you don't bring in extra stress like a child into a family. Because now it, it now people are annihilating their families. You see it all over the place. Kids are, oh, it's bad. And so now even children are a suspect. So no, I'm not impressed that you have children. Because what will they be as an adult? Someone to institutionalize later? Or will they die suddenly when the system changes their frequencies? The system knows the algorithm has to get people knows the algorithms to get people to act upon their urges. Now, somebody posted, Jane Driscoll, a Driscoll pers uh, posted something about now people are dealing with herpes or herpes outbreaks in her, her area. And I, I know over the weekend, I mean, I don't have herpes as far as I know. 
But I felt different weird things waking up in certain parts of my body. And it, w- and it was a little painful, not majorly painful, but it was a little painful for a minute. And I'm like, ooh, this is weird. And then it disappeared. Almost like having a yeast infection. But it was, but it wasn't. It just disappeared. The pain disappeared. Everything disappeared. It's released. And I'm like, ah, I wonder what kind of algorithms are bringing up things sexually. Algorithms bring up things, you know, neurologically. Algorithms are bring up things like in your back, in your arms, in your legs, in your feet. If you have issues in any one of those parts of your area that has a specific algorithm that can be triggered by another algorithm, then it stands to reason why people feel the same things at the same times. Or feel the same things at different times around the same time. Okay. So the system knows the algorithms to get people to act upon their urges. I feel it. Other people have felt the same thing during certain times. The system is activating certain people to act upon their urges. That's what the system is trying to guide reproduction carefully. And so the system had to figure out how did a person develop a serial killer, a wife beater, a bully, a violent person. Yeah, they have to do their experiments. And so now they can see and detect those who develop tendencies in their children and in themselves. And that's why you have the group mentality so they can observe the group, your family, people on Facebook, what they're posting, who they interact with who they talk to behind private messenger, email, instant message, even incognito, right? (laughs) Because you can see how people develop themselves to be so radicalized, to be basically deadly, religious fanatics, political fanatics, science fanatics, the Jim Jones, the David Koresh's. Now watch all the different people out there so radicalized against whatever. What do you think they're turning their children into? Because children hear everything. And when mommy and daddy target a person, place, or thing, that child could take things to the most extreme because they're serving mommy and daddy. And in their mind, they're serving the general good. That's how fucking dangerous it is out there. We are in some dangerous times. Not everything is so obvious. And if mommy and daddy are under the influence, they won't hear a damn thing or even detect danger in their own family. And then even their parents, and even the parents are traumatized. And children are crafty. The children know a lot more than you think they know. That's why it's so dangerous out there. Parents don't know what they're breeding in their children. Completely oblivious to the world they live in. And if they're under the influence of cannabis and whatever else, they are completely unaware. If this is not an indicator of that child killing somebody, I don't know what is. But yeah, parents should be fucking terrified. Absolutely, freaking lutely You should be terrified. Because you have no idea now in this climate change and particle acceleration what is being developed that quickly. I've dealt with some bad seeds out there, some adults, even young people. I can only imagine what younger people are like during climate change. Maturing faster. Realizing their intentions way sooner. And there is no chance to redirect because the climate is accelerated. Remember when you have shorter wavelengths, it's harder to redirect. Because it's too fast, you don't have time, uh, you don't have a good reaction time, not quick enough. But in a longer wavelength, you can observe people's patterns, you can see behaviors, and so you had time to redirect someone's behavior. But when you're in particle acceleration and the frequencies are faster and shorter, people snap. What would have been like uh, a temper tantrum would turn into, I'm just going to kill that person. That's what somebody... Another article posted that a kid just killed his parents because his parents were bugging them. And he called the police on the phone and said, yeah, I killed my parents because they were bugging me. The police were like, what the fuck? I mean, he was just so matter of fact. It was just like nothing. That's what we're dealing with. Because the frequencies are faster. The particles are going faster. People are realizing and, and, and discovering their urges faster. And some have been bred to kill. But maybe they wouldn't have... 20 years ago because there'd be other behaviors that come out that would kind of point that direction like killing animals or or who knows what. But now kids are just snapping. Adults are just snapping. They're like, fuck it. And so so maturing fast, realizing their intentions way sooner and there is no chance to redirect because the climate has accelerated. And then you have the other side, kids who have never been exposed to anything difficult or violent are like little lambs in the population. Once they're separated from the flock, they have absolutely no life experience or street sense. They have to be kept in a bubble because a predator will detect how inexperienced that girl or boy is in the public. 
And that's how easy it is for predators to snatch people, completely oblivious, parents and children. Oh, yeah, even in Ohio. And so we have serial killers and kidnappers and sexual predators even here, out here. Well, of course, they're everywhere. <laughs> but that's when I was thinking, like, oh, Ariel Castro in Cleveland. And so, I gotta blow my nose. <sighs> and so this girl out of Pennsylvania, so I'm part of this neighborhood crime watch group, and they're in Pennsylvania. And so, uh, the person posted, the human remains found in El Quipa last week were identified as a woman who went missing more than a year ago. And so Pennsylvania State Police said the body found in El Quipa on April 18th was identified as Rikia Griffey. The identity was confirmed through dental records. She laid here by herself, said Alyssa Griffey, her aunt, and we drove past her every day. Justice will be served for my cousin, whether it will be by the law or the Lord. Whenever she went, her light shined brighter than anything. She torped so many, touched so many people, said Avon Griffey, cousin of the victim. Family and friends, see Luciferian. She shone, her light shined brighter. Luciferian. Sources. Family and friends gathered to remember a 24, 24 year old woman on Monday near the spot where investigators found her body. So all these 24 year olds, 25 year olds, Hot and sexual, shaking their ass at people, walking around, thinking that they're pretty much safe everywhere. Don't realize what they're triggering in other people. That's why it's so fucking dangerous for women. Especially 25-year-olds who think they are invincible because they're hot and sexual. No, you're becoming a target to somebody and something. And then you have to be treated as a princess. To be protected all the time until that person's not around there or that person actually is harming them. The one that's protecting them is also harming them. That's what these 24-year-olds and 25-year-olds don't even realize because they don't have enough life experience and then they're told to get married at a young age and they do. They get sexualized at a young age. They get married, become this thing for the husband or whatever. So then she gets abused and doesn't realize it because, hey, she's tied on the dotted line. She married this person. So every, every orifice is up for grabs, told to have babies. She falls apart and then she dies. And so that's in it for a lot of these 25-year-olds with parents who are so fucking unaware who have been over-sexualized as a young child and has over-sexualized their own children. And so then, women, you need to protect yourself. This is becoming way too commonplace. Beautiful women become targets. They could be mothers. They could be single people. They could be wives. Women, no, now more than ever, in this climate change, you can't live the same way you did before. You have to be scared. You have to tap into that fear because if you don't, some women may not survive. Remember, we are now dealing with the fallout of the 1960s sex and porn industry. And right now, many women are disposable because they're never taught that there's a darker world out there they have no idea or even aware of. So when a predator finds a lamb separated from the flock, especially out there in the public, the predator becomes opportunistic. You can't afford to think you live in 1985 because even then, back then, it was dangerous based upon where you lived. Now dangerous across railroad tracks. It's in the gated communities. Social media and even the public is like a catalog for some people, especially predators. I wouldn't want to be beautiful in this society. I wouldn't want to be beautiful or naive in this society. It's freaking deadly. Women have been taught they were disposable and are disposable. Women have been taught they can't take care of themselves and they have to be surrounded by people to save them, which is why many women are victims out there. Their mothers never knew any better. She came from a different time. The daughter didn't know any better. She, the granddaughter didn't know any better until they learned the hard way, and sometimes they don't survive it. And I think that needs a fucking change. And I'm telling you, the sexual predators are all over the place. Regardless of this, it's the reason why this woman is dead, but I can bet you that's the motivation. And during climate change, they are even more pervasive as far as women coming up missing and dying. So when you have a bunch of die suddenly groups, or died suddenly people, serial killers, especially the ones who target women, will also be on the hunt. The system sped up people's intentions and people's sicknesses and people's cancers and people's aging process. That's why you have 30-year-olds that look like my fucking age, 50. Even predatory intentions. These are dangerous. These dangerous times aren't just people dying suddenly or aggressive diagnosable conditions more frequently. It's also the serial killers even children who are now shown to be deadly when given the opportunity. And that's the scariest of all, because we don't look at children as to be serial killers or deadly until we actually see the evidence. But during particle acceleration, what could have been redirected during a slow frequency time, children don't get the time to redirect. 
They become what they were bred to be right off the bat. There was no time for intervention. That's why the system says, maybe you shouldn't have children because you don't know what you are breeding into the population. And there are a lot of unaware parents who don't understand how to read faces and backgrounds and behaviors. And everyone wants to feel sorry for children until they start turning into little adults killing people. Or they turn into adults who kill people, but, but they hide behind shit very well. You literally cannot trust strangers. Women need not to put themselves in the position around strangers, but sometimes you have to. But then you have to listen to your gut. That's why it's so important for women to be mostly self-sufficient and relatively healthy, so she's not relying on some stranger to save her from something. Because what could she be walking into could be even more deadlier. That's why I'm taking the time now to learn things I didn't know before. But I had to get my health in check first. Because this is the time to do that for me. Other people have to start from another place, like getting their health in check. But now I have to learn the things I didn't know before, so I don't have to rely on strangers if I don't absolutely have to. But sometimes it'll be necessary. And so we are in the 1950s, 1960s, 70s, 80s, all over again. John Wayne Gacy, Charles Ng, Google them, Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, Charles Manson, Richard Allen Davis. He kidnapped Polly Class. And then Elizabeth, Elizabeth Smart, remember her? Charles Manson, Richard Allen Davis, Richard Ramirez, the bind torture, the BTK killer, the Green River killer. Do I have to keep going on? And families produce that in their, in their family. And they don't even realize it because they don't know any better. So we have to see, that's why, that's why we have Facebook and YouTube and the internet so you can see what you're producing. And then you can actually observe patterns and maybe potentially look at your own behavior. If you're even aware to look at your own behavior. Some people are like, yeah, I do no wrong. Whatever, it's all their fault. And I say all over the internet. You know, it's Israel's fault. It's the Democrats' fault. It's the Republicans' fault. Uh, I will look way in your backyard, please. Because chances are, your radicalization has now radicalized your kid to be something dangerous. The system will have to observe and surveil. And so anyways, I have pictures about toilets. <laughs> all right. And as far as salt, salting in, salting out. All right. So salting in, convert the food into vital organs and strong blood vessels, which is why you need fatty acid, amino acid, prohormones, and minerals. So you can uh, convert the food into strong blood vessels, into brains, into yeah, neurological um, capacity, into vital organs and all that. And salting out is known as purification. But you, you can also be too purified. So you never want to over purify yourself. All right. And so, which is why you must have salt in your food, a lot of it, so you can de decalcify your pineal gland and everything else and then break up all the plaque in your system. So what brought this on is that I was cleaning up calcium deposits, breaking them off the end of the, the, um, the faucets because we have hard water. We don't have a water softener. And I didn't grow up with, with, with the hard water. I grew up with a water softener. So it was, n I didn't understand how people have all this crazy, it's not even metal. It's just calcification. And I'm like, I don't understand. And, and so now I get it. And so when I'm breaking off calcium off the end of my faucet, I'm like, what the fuck is it? Oh, okay. It's the hard water. And they see the water spots. And then my husband was, doing stuff and finally cleaning up stuff around the water, the, the hard water stuff, the calcium deposit, whether in the bottom of the shower, that I had no clue how to freaking clean up because I never had to deal with that. And then, of course, that can affect the toilets, too. And I'm like, holy shit. And I'm trying to think of how, oh, my God, how do you, how do you, okay. And then I'm looking at the other, the kitchen sink. And so, and so, which is why you must have salt in your food so you can decalcify your pineal gland and everything else, break up all the plaque in your system. The plaque on the water faucet, the plaque at the bottom of the, of the shower, the plaque on the kitchen sink. Or you will have calcium deposits as well as cancer and a whole lot more of excessive fat. Salt brings things together, that's called negentropy, and also breaks up things that need to be broken up called entropy, which is why salt and a, a healthy diet of salt and sugar and carbs and meat and milk and cheese and eggs can help even break up kidney stones and not let them form up because you have enough entropy to release to break up things that would cause blockages and then bring things together to help you push out the things that need to be pushed out 
It's a perfect balance if you understand what needs to be done. People use excessive minerals to do heavy metal DETOXs, causing more opposing forces in the body. Why don't you just have salt in your food to salt in and salt out so you're not using detergents in your body? Basically, that's what people are using is detergents in their body. And I did too, okay? I was guilty of it at least 12 years ago. I don't do any more borax or boron or anything like that, okay? <laughs> and so, yeah, I was so proud of myself, you know, getting rid of the calcium. So, yeah, you know, uh, yeah. there was a lot of awakenings yesterday, okay? Um, So you can read all that. I'm not going to go into too much detail. And, yeah, I'm not going to. So now you, under now you understand. Now do you understand why the left-wing politics says a mother's life is the most important? Women were subjected to major sexual slavery and servitude to the system. They were destroyed by the patriarchal society. They were destroyed by their own mothers. Okay, so even back in the 171500s and the whole Salem witch trials. The left-wing movement understood this, but then making women sexual with nothing to protect her from predators, well, we develop monsters in our society, which is why the porn industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. And the porn industry has turned men and women into sexual predators. And then women that they can't get enough sex. So they go outside the marriage. Women who have to, I mean, I'm watching Six Feet Under. And it's so weird watching that because I'm watching my 20s. And they came out in 2001. So they were actually reflecting back on the 1990s. And I was doing some of those courses, the group mentality courses, like uh, it was a landmark education. They call it the forum. And it was a derivative of the EST program. And they were taught, they're talking about that in Six Feet Under. And they're talking about, and so that girl that uh, Nate, one of the the, hero, the heroes in the, in the story, he dates a girl who was raised by scientists, by psychologists, psychiatrists, whatever. And it fucked with her head. She's all sexual and crazy and does things that are like, oh my gosh. And then the son goes gets institutionalized because he's all fucked up in the head and i'm like oh my god <laughs> and so the left wing movement understood this but then making women sexual with nothing to protect her from predators and then she becomes predatory and goes outside of her relationship she fucked up that marriage but then he goes into marries a girl from seattle or wherever and she's a vegan and uh, with a baby <laughs> Well, we develop monsters in our society, which is why the porn industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. We went too far left and we went too far right. At some point, there must be relative equilibrium or else women will be sacrificed to the system. It's already happening, which is also why women in relationships need to respect their body. Just because you said yes, doesn't mean you aren't destroying yourself. Just because you signed on the dotted line didn't mean you had to sacrifice every orifice in your body for whoever. That's why the system is doing a great reset. It's hard to breed out bad habits in the population. And right now, women are teaching their girls they're nothing more than a sexual plaything or a sidekick to somebody, or they must be somebody's mother. And if they have a college degree, it makes them even more desirable to be someone's educated sexual plaything. But most of the system wants women to be somebody's sexual plaything, regardless of education. That's where OnlyFans, Instagram, okay, Facebook Reels. Because that's how mothers raise their children nowadays. You see it in all the photos. It's pretty hard to push, to put academics first when the girls' hormones are raging, even the men. And they're told they are nobody until somebody loves them or until they get married and have a baby. The mother never taught them personal survival, even in a relationship with man or a woman, because the mother barely survived her own relationship. The mothers are under the influence, completely checked out, or addicted to all different substances, and their social circles are more important than the safety of themselves and their offspring. But she's willing to torture her sons and daughters to go through the same bullshit that she went through because she fell for the party line. And so her daughters will get punished for her ignorance. So will her sons. And it never ends. So these girls and boys go into relationships using Netflix as a guide on how to treat women and men and children. They become overly sexualized and then suffering while bringing in children. You can't escape the stigma of pointing out the elephant in the room. And I'm telling you, that's me. I'm pointing out the elephant in the room. I've been in basically all of it. I've seen it all for the most part. I haven't seen it all because if I saw it all, I'd be so traumatized, but not really. I'm releasing demons, right? No matter where I escaped from, what I was going into was much worse until I could finally redirect the intentions personally in my world. Luckily, my husband is fucking amazing and he has no need to destroy me. And luckily we get together late. Luckily we got together later on in life because we didn't bring in a child that would cause more suffering in the future. 
what's made us last this long, 13 years, we have no children. We had to work on ourselves with each other. And if you if you don't understand how to work with each other and get, get over the differences with each other without being under the influence, how the hell are you going to raise a child if you can't even resolve your own fucking personal issues as well as the issues you have with the other person? But what people, what people do is they go under the influence, they check out, and they just go through the motions until one day you can't ignore the elephant in the room and it's there and then the people people there's an event and people break up. And it's done. What's made us last this long? We had no children. Because that is a face worse than, de- worse, than de- worse than death on so many levels. Especially during climate change. It's hard enough to survive your community and world. To bring in a child in this chaos is only asking for torture. The surgical system is proof. State-sanctioned torture. Both children and parents are being tortured by the medical and holistic industry. That's why the suffering is astronomical. Okay? That's why I wouldn't bring a child into this world right now. You're just asking for the suffering. But you can't tell women who are already trapped in any of this. They'll read this and hate me for it. They'll say I'm barren and stupid and think I wished I had a family. Oh, I did wish I had a family a while back. I wished I belonged to a family. I wished I was accepted by my in-laws way back when. And it was never meant to happen that way. I was never meant to assimilate to somebody else, regardless. It didn't matter if they were right or wrong or whatever. I was never meant to do that. I was meant to set my own path and to find someone that's willing to to be okay with that, even though he he or she may not be okay with it in their world, they were okay with me setting my own path and they had the freedom to develop their own path, whatever, or follow somebody else's. You know, I can't change my husband. I accept him for who he is. He's grudgingly been okay with who I am. It's still difficult for him. And I don't blame him because he comes from a mainstream world where you don't make waves. You assimilate. He's a company man. He's a fucking company man. He's a good company man. He's a loyal company man. I'm not. And I already knew it. I knew it a long time ago. That's how it was so hard in California because you have to be a company man in California. So, yeah, then I had to find a different way to do things. All right. And so, um, so no, I don't wish I had a family. I'm glad I don't belong to a family. I'm glad I don't have a close knit group of friends because if you try to change, they will try to stop you. And if you're so dependent on them, you won't be able to get, you'll be trapped because you need them. And when you need something so much like friends and family, you'll never change. You'll die with them. I'm looking out on Facebook and I see the suffering. I see how hard people paint such a great life that they think they have, but they are suffering cause chasing pleasure in paradise desperate to be under the influence of something, blaming someone or something, and they can't figure out why their children are sick. And they have to be stuck under the influence. That's enough birth control for me. <laughs> More confirmation that I made the right decision even 13 years ago. And so my husband and I, were, we were grooming each other. I was grooming him to be something for me. He was grooming me to be something for him. And so, and the poles flip back and forth each time we go through an evolution. And we've been doing okay. It hasn't been easy, but we've been doing okay. So yeah, I was ahead of my time a long time ago because I knew what I wanted. And it's so crazy that girl, (laughs) I can't, I can't be, never mind. Uh, I'm watching Six Feet Under and I just see a lot of parallels and I'm like, oh my God, okay, this is fucking weird. And it's a good, it's a good fucking show. It's like watching, so it's just a good show. You should, you should watch it. It, It's seriously, it's a good Netflix series. And so more confirmation, I made the right decision 13 years ago. Yeah, I was ahead of my time a long time ago, and I'm still ahead of my time today. Absolutely. Because I'm able to evolve and change my mind and point out the obvious. I was given the gift of foresight, and that is priceless. If somebody, a stranger, gives you the gift of foresight, if you recognize that as a gift, you are the person beyond your years. It's not hard to identify the patterns if you're sober. But remember this, the system gave you patterns to follow to keep you distracted. So even though people are like, oh, I see the patterns of chemtrails and all the different devices trying to control you, ugh, and you're under the influence of pot and whatever else, yeah, you're getting given a, a track to go on and look at all the patterns. Here, look, confirmation bias. But that's one thing to to recognize the patterns of like all the different, you know, Luciferian control mechanisms. But what about the patterns in your own life? What about what you are resisting is what will also persist? 
what if you saw the patterns that that's the system wants you to do is resist and point out things that are the obvious. They're using you as a tool to condition the population to expect the changes and to see what they have been developing. It doesn't matter if you like it or hate it. But maybe you see the pattern that you've been used as a tool for so many different reasons. Okay, so how will you be okay with being used as a tool? Because I use it as a tool too. And then how do you actually survive? All right, so remember... The system gave you patterns to follow to keep you distracted, but you had to be aware of other patterns in your world. You couldn't stay stuck in just one set of patterns. You had to be open to see all patterns around you. Okay? And so anyway, this is for the girls out there. I see these girls out there, single moms, one, two, three, five, and they're just so wishing for Prince Charming. They're wishing for a man or a woman, I guess, to love them unconditionally to love their children unconditionally, to be okay with getting up every single day and making just enough money to make sure everyone is living so comfortably and to be a shock absorber, to be the, the all loving husband with no issues, no you know dreams of their own that her and her family will be the only thing he will ever, ever pay attention to and love her correctly. Love her like God loves her correctly. Oh, that's a Cinderella syndrome. To be around someone who has your back 100%, you have to have your own back 100%. You had to be somebody self-sufficient, somewhat self-sufficient. When I met my husband, I had a job. I had money in my pocket. How did you have a job coming over here? Well, first of all, I negotiated $2,500 with one district manager to get one agent through. Then I developed a relationship with another agent and said I would work in Ohio cold calling using my phone number, my 916 phone number, to cold call California from Ohio, almost like my own little call center. So I negotiated doing the cold calling for another agent in California while I was over here in Ohio. And I, wherever I, I could work anywhere, I could work in, in my little apartment, in a little room, whoever. And I negotiated to be a roommate to somebody that I'm glad it didn't happen. But anyways, so I already had a job lined up for me wherever I was going. I had money in my pocket. I had a car. I had insurance. Okay. I had shit in the back of my car. I came into a situation where I could take care of myself if I needed to. But I wanted a partner. And I had my back 100%. And so when I met my husband, I had a job. I had money in my pocket. I was looking for a partner. I had no kids. I had no major issues. I mean, I knew I had PMDD, but I was manageable because I had my own job. I made my own company. A one-man show of cold calling, right? I was looking for someone to share my life with. I didn't have any major baggage or expect anyone to take care of anything. I had something to offer to him. And I had at least two hundred or two thousand five hundred dollars to my name to start a new life. So twenty five hundred dollars to a place like Ohio, especially where I am, Canton, Ohio, is, is is a good source of money. I mean, you could start a life here and do okay with twenty five hundred dollars. That's nothing in California. That will be gone in like five minutes. But here in Ohio, a little goes a long way over here. Nowadays, maybe not so much. Well, yeah, I mean, I paid 500 bucks for my mortgage, so you can figure out that. And so I had a job. I had no kids. I brought something to the table. I didn't take away from him. I added more to his life. I didn't take away from his life. Women, you cannot expect a man to save you with your children and anything else. If you haven't already proven, you can do things on your own when need be. And you can't expect him to give his whole life to you and your kids. You can't. But these women have these pie-in-the-sky ideals that they're going to find a man that'll be just like what they thought their baby daddy was until they realize that, no, that's a fucking fantasy that doesn't exist. And if it did exist, it existed a long time ago, but it wasn't really. It was just the different world back then. But nowadays, you don't know what the hell you're getting in a man or a woman. Maybe these things were more predictable back in the 1960s and 70s, right? Boomer Gen X came from, you know, different world. Now we have millennials and Generation Z 
who think they can have their parents fucking lie. Well, even back in the 60s, you didn't, things were changed even in the 60s and 70s. You couldn't have the 1940s and 50s type of lifestyle. In the 60s and 70s, but some did. You had the Christian revival, so you had the, the whole traditional side, and you had the, the feminists where everybody has sex with each other. Hey, great. You know, cannabis and group sex and, or, well, okay, whatever. So, women, you cannot expect a man to save you with your children and anything else. If you haven't already proven you can do things on your own when need be. It took me 13 years to fight for this type of relationship. And it was brutal. And it still is brutal sometimes. Because climate change is crazy. And I had no kids to get in the way. And I solved my own health issues. So my husband doesn't have to pay for health insurance. He doesn't have to worry about me. I don't cost him hardly any money when it comes to health issues. Or spending habits. Or addictions. Okay? That's why, that's why I'd be very careful choosing a man so early on in life and having children with him. Which is why it's brutal for parents to marry off their daughters to such, at such a young age. Because they might end up being a single mother. If they even survive childbirth. Given so many women are passing down deficient genetics to their offspring. Searching for Prince Charming forever. It is optimal to have a partner. But make sure it's a partner who has your back 1000%. And nowadays, people are dying suddenly. Women now, especially in the J world, you know... That's fine. Take care of what you've committed to transitioning from the old world to the new world. But now in the J world, how many people out there are dying suddenly that have issues that are coming to surface and things like that? You, you don't want to get with anyone because it might be something that you're going to be saddled with that you're not prepared to deal with. And why should you have to go and devote your life to someone who's deteriorating with issues? Who could die suddenly? Yeah, you could be like, well, I could do life insurance on them and then they die suddenly. <laughs> That's, no. Because you, that's horrible. Horrible. You don't want to do that either. Because no matter what, it's still horrible watching somebody deteriorate, fighting for their life, and then and then you fall in love with someone, they die suddenly, but, God, no. No. Be on your own if you can. Find a way to be relatively self-sufficient. But if you do find a partner and they and they and they are in your I don't know, you'll figure that out. But um but now I wouldn't get with anyone. My husband is the last person I'll ever get with and have right next to me. Because you don't know what you're getting out there. And again, the J world is such a minority. There's no way anyone out there in my world I would bring in my house after my husband. Fuck no. Uh -uh. So that's why you be careful marrying your girls off at 20 and 30. She'll get pregnant so early and then potentially be single in the future and she'll be the one to suffer because it's socially acceptable for a man to leave. And maybe he was smarter. I'm going to say, people who do leave their families, when they see the writing on the wall and they see how, and they don't realize because, yeah, sex is fun, and maybe they did wear a condom. Maybe she got off her birth control. Maybe the condom broke. And he's like, I told you I didn't want kids. I told you this. I didn't want kids. I don't want a family. He was clear to her in the beginning. And she was like, well, I'll just get pregnant and trap him. And so he's like, well, I'm not going to play these games. I'm not going to be trapped by you. Because someone will, will manipulate men into, into relationships by having a child. And so he walks away. He's looked at as a bad guy. But you don't know what was said in the beginning. Maybe he lied to her. Maybe he didn't. Who knows? You will never know what the truth is of what, what started that situation. So she decides to have a child. She could have gotten it aborted. Oh, God, that's against my religion. Okay. Well, that's against your religion. Are you willing to take on the brunt of the duties? And if you did, that was your choice. If he wanted to be around, he'd be around. If he didn't want to be around, there's a reason why. He didn't want to be around to begin with. He wanted the sex, so did you. Maybe you wanted different things, but maybe you were, as a woman, you were deceptive about it. Like, yeah, okay, I'm okay with having just free sex, whatever. But the woman's like, uh-uh. I'm going to get pregnant, I'm going to trap him, and I'm going to slap him with child support. But the system says, hey, if you're going to have sex and someone has a baby, well, you got to pay child support. Or raise that baby, one of the two. 
But it's not necessarily the man's fault that he leaves. Oh, yeah, he left. But you don't know what was agreed upon way before sex happened. Maybe it was like, oh, we thought we could be together. But then I'm like, he realized, oh, no, it doesn't even matter how it started or how it ended. It's it's it, the situation is what it is. If he wanted to be around, he'd be around. If he doesn't, then he won't. So women have to be even smarter and take personal responsibility for their part in all of it. And even expect the man to leave at some point. And if he does, okay, it's not your fault or his fault. You chose to have that baby. No matter what he said or didn't say, you chose to have that baby. And you can leave if you want to. You can give that baby away to the system or to a grandparent or somebody. But then pride is what makes these girls keep it and then resent everyone around them and even demonize the man. Pride does that to women. How many single mothers out there got married too early, had children way too early, and now they're suffering? How many thought they had found their Prince Charming at 21 years old, only to be a single mother later on, hating men and then trying to make the best of it? That's what happens when you advocate aggressive sexuality and politics to women's vaginas. The parents became the slaves to the system. And then it is astronomical suffering forever. So I'm not impressed with hot chicks having babies at 21 and 19. I'll talk to you in 10 years. Or maybe I won't. In this climate, they might die suddenly. But the system warns you. The die suddenly group should have been an indicator. But you know how people are. They don't think anything will happen to them because they're special. And so... If the truth shall kill them, let them die. And that's why I said the Luciferian truth movement died suddenly. If the truth kills them, so let them die. Maybe they're talking about you, truther people. If you are a truther, you are a member of the Luciferian Illuminati truth movement. People are dying with the knowledge, with no ability to support the light. They are food intolerant. So there's somebody in the, in the right-wing conspiracy world who are a truther, and they passed away. I think Luke Radaski posted somebody died in the Patriot Movement. Why do you think you have access to the knowledge that you have that you think is so extraordinary? And it is. Because they want you to spin your hamster wheel so hard, exposing the truth, you don't survive the light. You do not survive the truth yourself. The irony is most truthers are under the influence. It doesn't matter if you know the truth if you don't survive the truth. That's Luciferian. And so truthers will die in a blaze of glory and light if they don't learn how to sit in the darkness and get off the drugs, the alcohol, and the treatments. But it's more fun exposing the truth like, than surviving it and facing their own darkness. That's called porn, okay? So many people in the conspiracy world have passed away in the middle of their truthing, and they bought into the drugs and the alcohol to assuage their pain and suffering, and the herbs, and the concoctions, and the and the food mitigation protocols, and the sun gazing, and the breatharian stuff. But they're saying the system is trying to kill you. Well, I think you've done it to yourself, truthers. Even the mainstreamers do it to themselves. And then join a bandwagon for a minute until it's not trendy anymore. What was it all for if you don't fucking survive? So those are like in the mainstream, like, oh, I'm anti-V. I don't care if you are, but I'm going to say politically, I'm anti-V. whoop do fucking do what was it all for if you don't fucking survive? That's right. It was all about pleasure and paradise and fun until it becomes extraordinary suffering and then you're forced into rest and peace. And if you're lucky, die suddenly. Doing what you love to do. See no suffering. Die suddenly alleviates the suffering. What's the problem with die suddenly if you can't handle suffering anyways, right? Ironic, isn't it? So when someone recommends you a remedy regardless, they're giving you a way out to die suddenly in the future. The system employed beautiful people and your family and friends to give you a way out of suffering. That's called died suddenly. Every food mitigation protocol and drug and alcohol is another nail in your coffin. Then all out extinction of you. That's called died suddenly. Excessive fertility develops died suddenly. So many people in the truth movement do not survive their politics. They are dropping like flies. Even more so in the future because the system will not let up. If the truth kills them, so let them die. Maybe they're talking about you, truth or people. Here we go. If people feel abandoned because you walked away, they were using you and they weren't done sucking you dry. 
So if a woman leaves her family, if a man leaves leaves their family, people feel all abandoned. Well, it's because they, you, you were using them and they couldn't handle it anymore. They, they didn't have any more left to give. And people get demonized for it. That's fine. The system will pick up where where a person leaves off. If you're a minor, you'll get some, you'll foster kid or a family member. But if people feel abandoned because because you walked away, they were using you, and they weren't done sucking you dry. When people cling so tight to whatever or whatever, or whomever, they're using it, and they will find every way to keep things around. They're too afraid to set themselves free or you free. That's vampirism. That's family and friends, blood sucking parasitic energy. So that's why I'm kind of glad. I mean, my husband would love to work, you know, to be home every day at some point, and that's fine. Okay, one day, who knows? But no matter what, space is amazing. Give people the opportunity to have their space. You know, sometimes you need to be in separate parts of the house sometimes. Sometimes you need to sleep alone. Sometimes you need to give people the opportunity to just have their own world, their own mind, their own body, their own spirit, and still be able to hang out together without sucking each other dry. It's when someone can handle loss and energy, loss and change and they can evolve to the next thing, they have a chance. It's when someone can handle loss and change and they can evolve to the next thing, they have a chance. If you can walk away from California and live minimally, if you can walk away from the trappings of wealth of friends and family, if you're only down to one person next to you that you're willing to take care of through thick and thin, man, you got it made. My husband is my person. I am so down for him through thick and thin, and he's earned that right. My gut told me he was, and this is a type of person to invest in. He was and is a type of person to invest in. And I made sure he was. We might have our differences, but he is definitely giving me the freedom to be who I need to be, even if I have to fight for it. Okay? Because I have to appeal to his logic. I have to appeal to logic. I can't, like, physically fight him to be to be who I am. You don't want to do that. You don't want to go to blow someone. So you have to learn how to talk to people. All right? You got to learn how to speak. Because his survival and my survival depends on it. If there is that one person who has your fucking back 100% and you have their back and your back 100 fucking percent, you might have a chance to survive. I walked away from California. I walked into the unknown. I walked away from California at least three or four times until finally I was able to stay away from California and everything it represents. And I fucking survived it. Those who master the art of walking away could survive climate change because that's what it will take to survive. Walking the fuck away. If you're backed into a corner, you fight to win. But true survival is walking the fuck away. If people feel abandoned because you walked away, they were using you and they weren't done sucking you dry. If you plan to die anyways, if you believe you should die, what's the point eating organic? What's the point treating your disease? The system is making money off your beliefs. They've convert, they're have convert. they converting your body into cash, and you are completely okay with that. You already gave your permission for them to destroy you. They're just making it fun for you. Completely mixed messages. So I don't know if I can take you seriously if you're an, if you're an activist against air, food, and water, if you have problems with religion or atheism. You already told the system you plan to die anyways. You just want to be a beautiful corpse on the way out the door. Be careful what you wish for. And that's why the J-Juice world is down to just me. I did the work. I can prove I can save myself during climate change. It will be up to other people to prove they can save themselves. So I even left the truth movement. It was just another distraction, a religion. That's the J-World is leaving those movements. And how do you set yourself apart? I don't know. You'll figure it out. I have the ability to change my mind and survive climate change. I don't resist a damn thing. See, I do share people that are in the movement still information, not because I am against it or whatever. It's like, oh, wow, something else <laughs> to be aware of. But I'm not against it. I mean, what are you, you going to do? There's no point resisting it. It's just there. It's what goes on. You have no control over if it happens or doesn't happen. You have no idea. You're just at your house. You're just walking to the grocery store. You don't know what the hell is going on, but you've got to have a body to help to, 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 to make sure you can support all the messages and the energy and the environment. And so I have the ability to change my mind and survive climate change. I don't resist a damn thing. 
I don't love what's going on, but I intend to survive it even if you don't because you chose not to. Your religion, your politics, and your friends and family were way more important than your own life. That was the intention and purpose. People trapped in the trappings of wealth and friends and family. I had to walk away. I had the strength to walk away. Some people will have the strength to walk away. Others will not. That's why my information is not for everyone. And so being correct about anything is pointless. So there's like, oh, see, we told you it was chemtrails. They're now admitting it's cloud seeding and this and that. Okay, so you're right. So now what? Being correct about anything is pointless if you cannot change or survive being correct. Well, it's just the reason why people are, are gloating that they're, that they're correct because they feel it's vindication. Okay, so you're right. Even if you were wrong, people are still doing what they're going to do. They're not going to change. You haven't changed. The fact that you said, okay, I proved to you now because they're admitting it that they are doing geoengineering and chemtrails, contrails, or whatever, but your perception of it was probably not correct based upon what the mainstreamers' perception of what your perception of it was. You think the chemtrails are poison. No, they're not poison. Because it's EPA approved. But, oh my God, EPA has proved it. It doesn't mean anything. Agencies want to kill us. Well, I guess at some point you're going to have to figure out how to adapt to your environment. But so the characterizations are based upon how you want to perceive it. And your perception isn't always the correct perception. Because somebody else may have a different one that's also correct. So who's more correct? It doesn't even fucking matter. Can you survive it? So being correct about anything is pointless if you cannot change or survive being correct. If you plan to die anyways, if you think your body is a vessel and your soul is forever, there's nothing to resist. You have no politics. You're not any religion. You expect to pass away. So it doesn't matter what people do to you or not do to you. You expect to disintegrate into the universe, which means you won't even protect yourself even in public. You'll take no precautions. You'll assume everyone out there is protecting you. And you know inside no one gives a shit out there. Because they are too busy trying to protect themselves. So if you plan to die anyways, you won't care what others do or what others say or not say. Because it won't matter. You'll be dead one day, if not sooner. And if you plan to die someday, your opinions about anything are irrelevant. You're just a ghost waiting to die. You told everyone you are a temporary person. You not, take, not to take you seriously because you don't even take yourself seriously. You'll be used and abused by the system and everyone around you. And then you'll resent it. But you already told everyone that you have absolutely no respect for yourself. You don't plan to live. You expect to die. And you'll make sure everyone knows this. And people will treat you accordingly. They will take advantage of you because you allowed it. Because you plan to die someday. So don't take you seriously. And don't take your life seriously. And you don't take your life seriously. And that's why there are victims and perpetrators. Because you send off mixed messages. Professional victims. My world is ahead of its time. That's my suffering. Watching everyone destroy themselves and call it life and healing. You told everyone you are temporary. The system will treat you as such. The people who enslave themselves are so patriotic that they say they're fighting to free themselves but because they jailed themselves. Freedom fighters are pushing for their own diet suddenly. They refuse to change. Yeah, death is a freedom from this horrible life on earth, right? <laughs> they refuse to change. They can't handle air, food, and water. They are under a string of remedies and under so many diagnosable conditions, they are just in a jail. Yeah, they're in a jail. Their body won't release anything. And they keep attacking themselves. Now, you can release the cancer, but no people attack it and their body rebels against them. And they still hold it inside. They trap it inside. And then they claim they're trying to free themselves from the slavery of the left or the right. And they're forced to be a Democrat or Republican or a Libertarian, further enslaving themselves into a predetermined outcome. And they look for a hero and hunt for Satan when they had the key the whole time. But they're too busy looking out, not within. Culture is predetermined. That's why biotechnology exists. The system can develop any culture they want. And if you're not lucid enough to understand this, you will fall for every other fucking culture the system gives you. That's called died suddenly. Illuminated ones equals truthers. All the chemtrail activists, anti-vaccine, anti-GMO, Anti-NWO are the illuminated ones. The mainstreamers are still in the dark ages, oblivious. And so the Julie Juice woke up your immune system in 2016 and conditioned some people to potentially survive climate change. And yeah, those who survived heart attacks and strokes in 2016 because we activated your immune system most likely would have died during climate change pandemic of 2019. Having a diagnosis is not inherently bad. 
all the treatments for diagnoses is what people have died from, period. That includes all the elderly women selling young hot women all the herbs and supplements to everyone and children, paving the way for the future died suddenlies. Traditions are definitely killers in a Luciferian society, and there are so many traditionalists out there. Starvation, operations, and herbs, and lack of rest and sleep is why died suddenlies. Kids are growing up so fast they don't have time to reinforce their blood vessels and vital organs because they must keep up with their friends and family. So kids are either overabundant or so skinny, the wind blows a different direction, they don't survive the light. Innately, my world knew what kind of devastation you'd be facing in the future. I knew the dangers of religion and politics and the dogmatic scientists, even the truth movement. That was another psychological operation. But it was necessary, okay? And it's pretty much too late now. How many people are out there willing to change anything? Not many. Slim to none. They love exposing the truth, but they won't survive it. That was a psychological operation. They knew you couldn't afford your lifestyle, even in the light. Elderly women will take their daughters down. Fathers will destroy their sons and their daughters because you refuse to change. Even hot women with daughters and sons won't change a damn thing. Why should they? They're free. No one can tell them anything. The system knew how resistant people were to change. That's why they changed the environment. And they don't hide it from you. Good luck trying to stop it. You can't. That was what Sharon Tate represented in the, in the Manson murders. Hot women having kids diluting their genes and then acting like a damsel in distress begging for everyone to save them from their own mess of a life, using religion to guilt people into helping them, using politics and killing you with kindness to guilt people into helping you and worshiping you, using religion to justify whatever you want. The system pulled out all the stops. The system did a number on hot girls. The system did a number on women in general. And it doesn't matter, point it out, if you can't fucking survive it. Blonde girls, brown girls, the system messed up the women in our society, and now these girls are suffering they're trapped into taking care of so many children and grandchildren, even all the animals they must save. It's so fucking sad, it really is. It's like watching a train wreck. And no matter how much help you give them, it's never enough. It will never be enough until they suck you dry. That's why if you have the strength to walk away now, because it will never end, the suffering will not end until somebody dies suddenly. And if you point this out to anyone that is in that situation, you'll be called Satan. You'll be insulted. Everyone in their world will attack you, the fuck out of you, calling the situation out. Because those poor girls are trapped and they feel entitled that someone should help them if they're nearby or if they have the means to. And so it will never end. It will never end. It will never be enough. And so that's why you only save yourself and is to walk away. The only way to save yourself is to walk away from people who are suffering astronomically. Only licensed professionals can end someone's suffering and strategize not going bankrupt from malpractice. You can't force people to suffer to live. So you let them die suddenly or bring in a professional to take them down as humanely as possible. That's oncology. That's all the energy healing people. It's all your energy gurus claiming to save you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Because they don't have it in them to save themselves. And if they did, they wouldn't be in that situation to begin with. And that's the saddest thing of all, watching the world, the old world fall apart. That's why you don't diminish die suddenly because there's no more suffering. I learned the hard way. People will, people suffering will destroy you. And they tried to. I tried to help people who are suffering that are in hospice. And they died anyways. And they blamed the death on me. That's how fucked it is. Helping people who are suffering astronomically. And so until they die suddenly, you can't get away from that trap. If you don't have it in them, if they don't have it in them to survive the suffering and help themselves, the need will be endless. And they will drown you. And that's why I walked away from society. And from friends and family. Because I knew the need would be so great, I would be fighting an uphill battle trying to take care of everybody. So what I said on Facebook was like my own safety. What do you mean by that? Because I said a lot of things that would insult people who are in situations that I knew would, would destroy me if I was a part of that. And so if I had, so if I say things on Facebook, it's for my own protection. And people, people the right people will be repelled the right people will be also attracted to this information. I had to save myself. So I walked the fuck away from desperate males and females. Help yourself. Stop trying to keep up with your neighbors. Stop being so damn materialistic. And so every remedy, every surgery, herb, algebra syrup, concoction, and treatments will pave the way for diet suddenly. The elderly women promote this. The beautiful men and women promote this. Even your licensed professionals and activists, truthers, promote a case for diet suddenly and call it healing. No more suffering. Ain't that the truth? Juicing your way out of cancer equals diet suddenly. 
And then I said that I already talked about that. And that's it. Yeah. So there you go. So basically, what did it all come down to? What did I, how did I wrap it up in the beginning? The Luciferian truth movement shone, li shone a light on the deadly tribal family mentality developing in serial killers and sexual predators in the population. And so, yeah. The trains left the station. Women, men, if you have it in you, walk away from the crazy suffering. If you don't have the strength to walk away, you're part of it. You have no room to make claims against anyone because you're a tribe. You're not working on your own. You don't have it within you to work on your own. And so you'll join any group that will have you. Bye.